Welcome to an episode of Behind the Scenes, a weekly program unveiling the biggest political developments in Somali politics and the wider Horn of Africa region. I'm Sudan Mohamed, your host and producer here on Horfid Media. On this week's program, tensions are rising in Puntland between the incumbent state president Said Abdullah Deni and his allies known as Aden Jan, a group of politicians and businessmen in Puntland that have been pulling heavy political strings in the federal state for over a decade. Opponents of Denny have expressed concern, however, about the intentions of the Puntland state leader to extend his term beyond the legally prescribed presidential term of five years, whereas Denny has accused his opponents, Aaron Jan, of turning Puntland state into their own family business. What is happening in Puntland's political establishment, or why is it happening now? And this is the topic on the program today. We hope you find this program very informative. Please like, share, and for similar content, do subscribe to Hot for the Media. Also, do subscribe to Hot for the Media Group second channel, not as Hot for the TV, where you are currently watching this program and where you can find other exclusive programs such as behind this such as the African Weekly Roundup sorry and Mahahe Sala among others and last but not least do follow myself Sudan Mohammed Suleiman Hashi Yasin Abdi and the wider Hot for the Media team on our social media platforms that should appear on the screen any moment now. Let's get straight into it. State President Said Abdullah Deni of Puntland assumed his role on the 8th of January 2019 following an election in Gadawe. Then he came into office via an alliance with an old political group in Puntland State which has exerted extensive power and influence in the federal state for more than a decade, particularly since the election of Dharma Farola back in 2019. The alliance between Aaron Jan and Said Deni would remain strong for the next three years as both parties benefited from the political establishment, which was Deni would continue favoring members of, his, of this group with business contracts, among other things, and in return, Deni would receive the necessary political and military support to not only succeed as president of Puntland, but even go as far as president of Somalia. However, all these fancy plans have failed cataclysmically following the failure of Deni to secure the presidency of Somalia. Now faced with an increasingly unhappy Puntland state and his legacy in jeopardy, it seems as though Deni has taken another political step in an attempt to take all the chips on the table for himself and remove Aaron Jan from the entire political equation. So before we delve into this new rift, let's take a look at who Said Deni is and how he formed this relationship with Aaron Jan in the first place. Prior to politics, Said Deni was a businessman and a school principal in Puntland. At some point during the early 90s, Deni would become a member of the Muslim Brotherhood affiliated group in Somalia known as Al Islah and was a leading figure in his northeast region now known as Puntland. He would go on to be one of the founders of the major Somali corporation Tawfir Group which is based in Bosaso and he would also found the first Iman Nawahi schools in Bosaso which he would lead as principal for a number of years. Now, what is important to note is that the Denny's relationship with Aaron and Jan members goes back nearly two decades to the early 2000s and maybe as early as the 90s. Firstly, Tawfiq Group was founded by Denny alongside other key influential Aaron and Jan members, including Mahmoud Shiddo and Farah Dere, who would be killed by militia soldiers loyal to Puntland President Abdullah Yusuf in 2001. For those that do not know, Aaron Jan is an infamously shady and powerful group of business owners that hail from Getaway. Puntland's regional capital and have been influential in Puntland's state, economic and political development over the last decade or so. The formation of this new group would form back in the 1990s and came about due to aligning business and political interests as the state of Puntland was being formed by and it would be formed by 1998 and the northeastern region of Somalia would enter a new chapter separate from the rest of the country much like the northwestern neighbours of Somaliland's region of Somali, Somalia as a country. This newly formed influential business and political group would work closely with the disputed new Puntland president Jama Ali Jama in Bosas in 2001 and this is the first time we actually saw the political influence of Aaron Jan inside Somalia and during this period a political dispute arose when incumbent president state president Abdullah Yusuf wanted a term extension and this resulted in Jama Ali Jama being declared president in Bosas for nine months in opposition to the system being pushed by Abdullah Yusuf. Now in this government, short-lived government, Denny and his new group Aaron Jan would exert their political influence by pushing Aaron Jan de facto leader Mahmoud Shiddo as the then into, sorry, the position of State Minister of Finance for Putland. Now to see the level of relationship between Denny and Aaron Jan, we just look at Denny's life. For example, Denny's master's course in Malaysia was directly sponsored by Tawfiq Group which Mahmoud Shiddo serves as a board member. Now, upon his return, Denny would serve different roles within Tofei Group, earning a lot of his wealth during his tenure there. So, if we fast forward to 2019, who supported Denny's election to Pulan State President? 
Now, then he had various support from numerous political actors, including former Punla president and key Aranjan ally, Abdurrahman Farole, key Aranjan member Farah al Shira, and incumbent president Abdullah Gah, sorry, who was eliminated in the early rounds of that election. Furthermore, then he would receive support from political groups outside of Puntland State, including Somaliland, which is reported to have contributed $1 million to Denny's campaign, as well as Demul Jadid, Denny's former allies in Mordusho, led by Hassan Sheikh Mahmoud. Then he also received support from direct former businesses, uh, including Tawfiq, as well as another company called Sarakin. Interestingly, Aranjan leader Mahmoud Shiddo is reported to be a board member of both companies. In fact, the level of influence from Aranjan was so great that it's reported that Mahmoud Shiddo, Mahmoud Shiddo obtained $2 million from his friends at Dahab Shale on behalf of Denny's election campaign. Now, most of his money would be used to buy out MPs in Puntland State House of Representatives, with some reports suggesting Denny paid as much as 50 k $50,000 per MP to gain their support. It is clear that all these factions had their own political and business interests at heart to ensure Denny's victory in 2019. Now, for example, Aranjan wants to be influential within Puntland. Now, for example, in 2014, they supported the re-election of Abdurrahman Farola. They failed and Abdul Gas would become victorious. However, during this period, even then, Aranjan managed to infiltrate the Garoua or Villa Garoua and obtain various business contracts from the Puntland state government for their businesses. And under Denny, Denny's government, the plan was no different. It was for Aranjan administration to exist alongside Denny and uh, there to be contracts and the same kind of arrangement that would exist prior to Denny. However, it seems as though the alliance is falling apart as fast as it came. So to understand how the rift between the political parties led by Denny known as Kah and Aranjan grew, we take a look at a number of events that took place over the last year. Number one, local elections held in three regions of Puntland. Denny and his party suffered major defeat in the first direct elections held in Puntland since its creation in 1998. However, despite the result, the election was smeared by voter fraud and corruption among other things. Despite these accusations, the Puntland Development and Research Centre or PDRC failed to release a statement that outlined failures made by the Puntland State Administration in its first test to hold one person one vote elections. Indeed, the PDRC is one of the organisations that oversees the transition in Puntland State from the indirect to direct elections. In fact, opposition parties accused the PDRC, a research institute, of failing to do the legally bestowed duty upon them. Uh, of repeating, uh, of sort of releasing this independent report, and rather was accused of being biased towards Getaway, uh, led by Denny. And this would ultimately result in the chairman of the TPEC, uh, the election committee that held these direct elections, resigning, known, and the man known as Gulet Salah, due to political dispute between the TPEC and Getaway. Ultimately, it will take more than 160 days for the administration in Getaway to even accept the result of the election and allow elected officials to take their roles. This political mayhem would result in over 30 people being killed under mysterious circumstances. Number two, then his political defeat in Mordusha. Then he would suffer a major political defeat in Mordusha as he competed to win the presidential election on a federal level. Then he would play a key role in politically cornering and weakening the then president Mohammed Abdullah Farmajo with his alliance with jubilant strongman Ahmed Madobe. He would form alliances with opposition leaders to form the Badbadokara movement that would eventually wage war in Mordusha last year to topple the federal government to no avail. Then he would also handpick senators that would represent Pullan and had heavy influence in the appointment of clan elders that would eventually vote MPs for the lower house of the federal parliament to represent Puntlan, essentially laying the political groundwork for his election in Mogadishu before even declaring his bid to run. Then he had an interest to run for president since 2009 when he convinced his clan that he could obtain the minimum, prim minimum of premiership of Somalia, which he did not. Uh, and in fact, he lost the election in 2012, but he would win an MP seat for his clan uh, and would run for prime minister, but failed. He would uh, again attempt to run as president of Somalia between 2016 and 2017 elections, but again failed to do so. Interesting fact is that during his tenure as an MP between 2012 and 2016, then he would consistently be ranked amongst the worst attendees of parliament uh, amongst MPs. Then he came seventh. Uh, attending parliament, having only attended 27% of parliamentary sessions in those four years as an MP. His defeat in Mogadishu in 2020 would be detrimental to his vision, which has been in the works for over a decade. And then he suffered the most financially and politically out of all candidates of that year. For Denny, he went all out on this election, and now he has turned his attention to Getaway, while his former allies and now opponents accuse him of extensions. The defeat in Mogadishu created a more ruthless, impatient, and vengeful version of Denny, which explains his intention to single-handedly and powerfully take control of the Puntran elections. And we can lastly point to the battles that took place in Borsaso, which saw dozens killed and a lot wounded. 
So what now? Well, publicly, a number of words have been exchanged between Denny and Aranjan in recent weeks, which showcased the extent of animosity between the two groups. During his speech last month in Karawe, Denny accused Aranjan of being a particular group that wants to single-handedly control Puntland. Now, Denny is not wrong. Aranjan's political faction has publicly supported for the continuation of the current electoral system in place in Puntland, which uh, is indirect elections and benefits three particular families. He said that his, this group came into politics for business and earning money from public office, and this would be his first political projectile thrown at Aranjan. Conversely, Aranjan hit back earlier with a statement from Puntland State MP Ali Hosh, who accused Denny of being greedy and salty because his plans did not succeed both in Mogadishu and will not succeed in Getaway. Now, Denny would begin an axing of all those related to Aranjan in his regional administration, including Finance Minister Hassan Abgal, Deputy Minister for Livestock Abdulwali Saeed, and the Minister of State for the Presidency. All had close relations with Aranjan, de facto leader Mahmoud Shiddo. All were replaced with allies, including Abdi Farah Juha. We also saw the resignation of Denny's Deputy Chief of Staff, Abdulwali Tema'ade, who was also a close ally of Aranjan. We can now see changes being made by Denny to the election framework program. For instance, the resignation of the transitional Puntland Electoral Commission Chairman or TPEC Gulet Salah signified a rift between the independent body and Gedewe. Analysts have suggested that Denny once was frustrated that the TPEC was not acting in accordance with his vision of the one person one vote framework. Reports go so far as to say Denny has now shifted support from the TPEC to the State Ministry of Interior led by Minister and ally Abdi Farah. To make matters worse, Denny recently appointed a new ministerial committee called the Election Acceleration Committee, which is composed of mainly ministers that are members of his political party, Ka. Regardless, while it does seem that Denny could lose his political battle with the shady yet powerful group Aranjan, which has been there for over a decade, there have been even splinters in their group equally. Now, the appointment of Farola's cousin as State Minister of Planning indicates that Denny is still attempting to appease some members of Aranjan. Additionally, it's reported that Denny has been buying support from opposition politicians as he attempts to gain support for this vision. We saw in September, for instance, the appointments of dozens of new military officials, the uh, people being uh, you know, upgraded in their ranking in the military. We saw new dozens of new government posts being offered off to various uh, political factions. And these political groups that Denny is attempting to appease our people who initially opposed him and what he's trying to do is he's trying to balance the numbers of people that support him with Aranjan because we know Aranjan how powerful they are both politically in terms of finance uh, so he's trying to balance this imbalance that currently exists. Uh, however, senior Puntland officials, including former presidents, have all called on Denny to stick to the current framework, which is indirect. They have argued that there is not enough time left to deliver one person one vote that is equally accepted by all political factions within Puntland. Now, the results in the three districts, coupled with the aftermath of that election, including delays, the resignation of the TPEC chair, the refusal of the PDRC Institute to release an independent report, as well as the appointment of a new ministerial committee composing of key allies to deliver the election indicate that a one-person one-vote election envisioned by Denny is not one that sees a victor outside from himself. And the reality is that Puntland is not any different to the rest of Somalia. While many try to argue this, Puntland, like the rest of Somalia, has political stakeholders. Somalia doesn't have a constitution that is equally accepted by all actual um, citizens of the country. Instead, we have political actors that agree on a temporary framework every time an election comes, so then they can all be happy with the results. In Puntland, it's the same thing. And then he can't just go about and make his own decisions and do whatever he wants to do and deliver the election the way he wants to deliver it. Because we can already see in only the three regions they held elections, it took 160 days for the government to even acknowledge the results. So then he isn't not wrong about Aranjan. But it is clear that Denny's playing a game of slimy politics and he will sign a deal even with the devil only to betray the devil to get what he wants. However, the reality is that Somalia and Pula are volatile, as I've said, and they're prone to violence if there isn't a political consensus amongst political actors. We've seen what happened in Mokdusho. We saw recent events in Borsaso. Nearly 30 people got killed due to violence following the three re election in the three regions. Denny must tread carefully.